Hey guys, Michael here from AroundTheTech.com. This is Around the Tech episode number two, Woot and Windows 8. Woot, which is a one deal a day service, has become an independent subsidiary of Amazon. Now, of course, they sent out the press release like every company monotonously does, but they did something one better. They actually released a wrap. So let's just jump right into that now. We got acquired by Amazon, so get the media in here with all their cameras on, because we used to be a little bit fly by night, but sun's starting today. We're a big time site. When we heard we were like, not some kind of scamazon, but it's true, we got acquired by Amazon. So no Moving on, Amazon has some other news. They've actually revamped their Kindle DX, which was their 9.7 inch ebook reader. At a, with a much sleeker graphite finish, the price has also dropped to $379. But besides the better look and the lower price tag, I think the biggest improvement is the new screen. It is now 1200 by 824, which is 150 pixels per inch but it actually has a 50% improved contrast ratio. So e-ink uh, is really improving, graphics will really pop, and text is really gonna fly off the screen, and this also improves battery life as well. In other news, major syndications are reporting that Windows 8 is being planned in Microsoft. Now obviously each year Microsoft is working on future products and future incarnations of their software. So some slides have been leaked, and they've included some features that may or may not actually appear in Windows 8, which is the rumored codename for the upcoming you know, new operating system after Windows 7. So among some of the features include near instant boot up and log off times, which is really nice, facial recognition for log in and out, push button reset, which basically restores Windows to all of its defaults while keeping your user files intact. So if something corrupts the registry or whatever the case may be, just one button and you're back to defaults. But what's also cool is Windows Store App Store, allowing applications and settings to transcend the PC, following the user from machine to machine. So no longer are you tethered to one laptop or one desktop, and then any you know differences you have to you know fix in between those machines. You just use the computer the way you want to use it, and no matter what workstation you're on, no matter where you are in the world, it'll all work exactly the same. So that's really an interesting feature coming out of Microsoft Redmond. Now, there's also the string of pluses to start off PlayStation Network Plus, which again is that $50 a year service, which is now live with firmware 3.4 from the PlayStation Store, or for the PlayStation 3, I should say. Now, among some of the features, you get free monthly PlayStation Network games, minis, and PS1 classics, as well as full game trials, which I previously reported. So basically, you'll be able to download a game and try it out for about an hour, and as far as you get in the game, that's how far you get with the trial, and then you can go ahead and delete it, or you can go ahead and purchase it. And automatic game downloads and installs. So you could say at 2 a.m., go in, check to see if there's any updates, update, and then turn yourself back off again. So anytime you use your, you know, your gaming system, you don't have to worry about game installs. It's certainly done automatically. Now the other plus is Hulu Plus, which costs $9.99 per month. Now, what do you get with this? First, complete access to the entire season of shows. So all the shows you enjoy on Hulu have previously been limited to the most recent five episodes. No longer with Hulu Plus, you'll be able to enjoy all the episodes in that season. Now, speaking of seasons, there are some shows, such as Grey's Anatomy, The Office, Arrested Development, Heroes, Prison Break, and there are several others that you can check out at Hulu.com slash plus that they dub as classic shows, and that the entire catalog of those shows will be available. So for Prison Break, all four seasons will be available. And tying into my next point, in high definition, 720p is coming for all shows on Hulu, if you have Hulu Plus. Unfortunately, there are still commercials, even though you're paying. So that's kind of a bummer, and really a big, a big problem I have with the service. But what's also a big thing about this new Hulu Plus release is syndication. Now, iPhone, iPod, iPad users, Xbox 360, PS3, Samsung TV owners, and many more uh, coming at rollout and later will be available. So you can watch now on your big screen TV, you can watch now on your iPhone or mobile device. I'm sure that there's Android clients and other mobile platforms coming out in the near future. So really they're trying to get more content into more people. The problem is, it's not complete. What do I mean by that? If there was a full catalog of all shows, all episodes, all seasons, in high definition, you know, then I would, you know, wouldn't mind paying $9.99 a month. But the fact of the matter is, you're only getting certain shows for every episode, if that makes sense. So it seems like this update is something that should have happened, you know, previously. We should have had syndicated things, we should have been able to watch it on mobile platforms, but we didn't. So now we're paying for something that I feel we should have for free, especially because Hulu isn't even definitive source for all episodes. There are several major networks, or there's at least one major network 
that isn't tied in with Hulu, so you can't get those episodes online. So it seems like you're paying and you're not getting the full experience when you could maybe pay, what is it, 9 or $10 at Netflix, get all those DVDs, movies, TV shows, and instant streaming of over 20,000 titles. Now it's been a sad week for the development team formerly known as Danger. Danger, which was the company behind the really famous Sidekicks, which was then later purchased and turned into the development studio at Microsoft that made the Kin. Well, previously in this week, Kin was axed, and on Thursday, T-Mobile noted that they were going to no longer be selling Sidekicks. So it's been a tough week for Danger. Two, you know, of their primary, you know, things that they did are now gone. Moving on with cell phones, Bloomberg is citing several high-quality sources that are saying a Verizon iPhone is coming in January 2011. Now, John Gruber remarks that Apple has kept the Verizon iPhone going all along, ready to put it into production when, if ever, the time comes. Now, what is he saying? Basically, he's saying they've never ruled out a Verizon iPhone after they were initially shut down by Verizon execs, but they just, you know, they don't have a deal in place or anything like that, but they have one ready in case something comes up. So, it sort of goes hand in hand with Bloomberg saying that there will be a deal coming soon. And now, this sort of ties in with Verizon's 4G LTE service, which will be launching initially later this year, and by the end of the year will be available in several major markets. If Apple can get something out on a fourth generation network, that'll really improve a lot of their services. For instance, FaceTime. Steve Jobs himself remarked that next year we'll be seeing FaceTime on mobile data services. So maybe he wasn't saying that we'll see it on AT&T's 3G anytime soon. Maybe he was alluding to a 4G network of Verizon in this case. So it's just something we keep track of, and we've really been keeping track of a Verizon wireless iPhone since 2007 when the first iPhone launched and people were fed up with Edge service on AT&T. So we'll keep track of this, and I'll be sure to report any breaking news to you in the coming weeks. Moving on with AT&T, AT&T is taking some heat for locking down their Android phones, the area and the backflip. Essentially, you've only been allowed to install applications that are available in the Android market. Why? AT&T says they want developers to be responsible for the applications they create. But really what that means is they don't want users being able to go to some website on their phones and download an unofficial tethering app, uh, that's just an example, uh, and getting by the AT&T restrictions of buying a tethering data plan and using tethering officially. So it, it's really tough for them to win this situation because you're lying when you say you want developers to be accountable. Really you want more control. Whereas other networks, such as Verizon Wireless, are allowing Android in its full glory to run, and at and starting to cripple it uh, when they finally getting phones, you know, much later than Verizon and T-Mobile had Android. So it's really a lose-lose situation. If at and really wants to step up their game, they're going to need to get high-quality handsets on there, especially if they know they're going to lose iPhone exclusivity. And they're going to really need to step up their game, increase service, increase customer service, and increase you know, the, the choices that the customer has. Last week I asked iPhone 4 users if they're being affected by the infamous death grip, and I finally have my phone and I can give you my two cents on that. Uh, so overwhelmingly in the comments, people said, yes, I am being affected. Unfortunately, they didn't go on to answer the second part of the question to say if that was causing drop calls or the infamous no service logo. Well, I'll tell you that I have been affected by it. Um, and it's not just grabbing your phone like this. Just casually holding it, it's almost like touch anywhere on the antennas affects the bar reading. And just holding it, this is a casual way to hold it if I just want to browse and then just click whatever, just casual web browsing or something. This is how I hold it and I've been noticing some issues. However, have pages stopped loading? No. Have calls been dropped? No. Am I seeing no service? No. So obviously this is somewhat of a software issue that Apple can address in 4.0.1. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind for prospective iPhone 4 users out there. Unless, of course, they want to wait for the long-fabled, often-talked-about Verizon iPhone. Now, for this week, I want to ask you, is Hulu Plus worth it, and do you plan on trying out Hulu Plus? Or do you think it's way too expensive, and the features that they're finally unveiling should have been available previously for the free version? Now, hopefully in the near future, I'll be getting a, a beta access to Hulu Plus and be able to walk you through the features and give you a more definitive answer. But just from the previews that we've seen so far, do you think it's worth it? Our deal of the day is really going to intrigue Xbox 360 users out there. If you want to renew your Xbox Live service, or if you haven't tried it before and you want to get in on it, Dell is offering a 12-month subscription card for only $29.99. So for $30 for an entire year, you'll get access to online gaming and all the other benefits that Xbox Live brings. Before I sign off for today, I just want to thank you for the comments and criticism and critique that I've received in my previous Around the Tech video. It's really helped me improve my setup and improve my workflow, and hopefully as we move along with episodes, we'll begin to improve. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.